everyone and welcome to this week's Power BI for Sports Science tutorial. Uh, this week uh, we're going to power performance through data by uh, two things. We're going to create a uh, little summary table or matrix here uh, to show each athlete in, in our, uh, I guess our database or our team or whatever it might be, uh, what their Z score is for a given day. Um, and we can also add on sleep duration there because we don't have anything for that yet. Um, and then uh, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust our rolling average measure slightly and I'm going to create a, uh, a little slicer here that I've got already set up so that you can change the number of days your rolling average is uh, calculated over. Um, this is just to give you a little bit of a different view of your data and you can see things slightly differently if you want to. Um, so let's get going and first we'll start with this uh, the matrix and we're going to just add this in here. Um, I like to try and line things up quite nicely so we'll go here and we only need to go sort of part way down the page we might add in a sleep uh, duration graph at the bottom rather than just in here so what we'll do is we will uh, add the name of our athletes and then we will add our uh, z score and we'll add our sleep duration so already you can see a few things uh, this is summing everything for both of these and we're only seeing one player. So what we need to do is change our interactions here. So to get every athlete, what you can do is use the click on the slicer and you'll see these little uh, toggles turn up, hit the no button and there's everyone show up. Uh, what you can do is you can then get rid of that in format and hide those from view. The second thing we should do is uh, one, you have two options. Uh, for me here, obviously my date, uh, my data is a little bit in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click a single day. And we're going to use the 21st because that's what we have uh, up to. But what you could do is use uh, relative date filtering and just select today's date. Uh, just one thing to be cautious of with that, depending on where you are in the world, uh, the way that Power BI works is in a UTC time zone. And so it will always change today's date to be uh, based on the UTC time zone, so regardless of where you are. It's a little bit of a limitation and it's just something you need to be aware of uh, when you try to use that kind of a function in Power BI. So now we have that, what we can do is we can just clean it up a little bit if you like and uh, make our values a bit bigger. So what I kind of like to do is create the background of um, my values to actually be white because I prefer that a little bit more uh, and then I like it with its with the headers uh, being red which is nice and like that I like to get rid of um, the totals so that's actually under subtotals so I get rid of that we don't really need that here uh, I want to make sure that this is white because it looked a bit funky uh, and what we will do is we would actually make our values a bit bigger. So let's just go to 14, for example. So it's nice and easy to see. We can do the same thing for our headers on the rows and also on our columns. And then the last thing you can do is uh, this is where it's relatively annoying. It's under field formatting to align our values towards the center. And then also, if you would like to, you can change how many decimal places show up. If you wanted one, if you wanted two, or if you wanted none at all. And our purpose, let's just keep two. Uh, it's quite, oh, I need to change also my sleep duration. It makes it a little bit easier to see um, what we need to see there. So we've got both of those. We can apply it to header as well if we like. Should do the same thing for the Z score. Apply to header, done. All right. What you can do if you wanted to, you could uh, color your Z score based on the same values we have here. Um, I'm not going to do that for now, but if you would like to do that, uh, you can find that under conditional formatting and you can use the same rules. So there we go. Just a really simple uh, team summary matrix, let's call it that. So let's just go to a title, add a title, team, need to spell team properly, 
summary. There we go. So that's nice and simple to see. Okay. And then what you could do is we could use a similar graph like this uh, below, and we could just add our uh, sleep duration into our graph here. But what you might like to do is change the values that you're using slightly. Um, and you could do it in a way where you could see any number of things. But the one thing that I like to do with sleep is kind of want to see a sum over a given period of days. So what you could do is use, um, use a very similar rolling value. So let's just, let's just grab this here. And we'll make a measure and we'll call this, uh, when it pops up, sleep duration. And let's just say we'll use the last four days, for example, four days. Oops, did not mean to hit enter. We'll go equals. We'll copy this in and I can change this slightly. And let's just change this to four. And then we will change this to sleep duration. There we go. So now we can use that as just our uh, column value. And what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure it's a sum rather than an average. So there we go. And now you can see where over a period of time are they getting a, like a good amount of sleep over the last four days. So. Um, that's one really nice way. You can use the negative values and you can, you'll get a different answer to what you have in. And that's something I should actually be doing in my Z scores or my rolling averages is using a negative value. What you'll see is your values will change slightly. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind because you want it to go back in time. And just change all of those very quickly here. So we'll see slightly different values or our rolling averages change slightly. So there we go. Done. Um, and then we can change the title of this. Let's just call this here column uh, sleep duration. And you should always put your value or your measure in uh, its metric. Sorry, its, its units within uh, its brackets. So let's go sleep duration by day. Okay. And we'll leave it at that for now for that one. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our, uh, our days count, I guess is the best way of calling it. So what I like to do is you'll just use uh, an enter data value here. You don't need to import this as a, um, I guess it's a, a field or a table from a CSV file or anything like that. You can just use a, a data input piece and we're just going to create a single column, call it days, and we're going to have 3, 5, 7, 10, 14, 21, 28 days. Just click load. As easy as that, we've got our values. And what you can do now is just add that into our slicer. Oops. I already have one, thank you very much. I thought I was clicked on, but here we go. So there we have, I've already uh, set some of these, so it's gonna be a single selection of one of these values. And then, so now all we need to do is two things. We need to create a measure, which we can just call this uh, measure days. And, well, let's just call it days count. And then all it needs to be is a selected value. That And because as we've been using this as a negative, we'll go times negative one. That'll just make our value a negative value for us so that it's easy for these, uh, our values here. So let's use uh, sleep quality first. And what we're going to do is just going to include this here, our days count, just like that. Simple as that. There we go. So now we have a different looking 
shape to our rolling average. If we go out to 28 days, you can see it flattens out quite a lot. Okay, so now we have that, we can add that nice and easily to all our other measures. And we're just going to do this for our rolling average values. Uh, we won't do it just as this point to our standard deviations. Alright, so there you have it. You can see our values changing on each of our figures as we adjust the number of days we want it to go back in time for our rolling value. And the last thing we'll do is we'll just add, we'll go nice and simple, a wellness dashboard title. You can make this as nice as you like. Uh, you could import this as anything. You could add this to your background, whatever you want, you guys want to do uh, for yours. Um, and you can make it as nice as you like for your dashboards. And I'm just going to add that there. I don't want it to be a hyperlink, but there you go. Let's move this down slightly. Okay, so you could fill in some of the spare space with some cards, for example, if you wanted to. Um, say, for example, if you wanted to just see a snapshot of how many, uh, how, what sleep duration do they have on a given day, and at the moment it's 34 hours, or whatever it might be. Um, and you could use that for your graph. Or for, to highlight things, sorry, straight away so quickly and easily for you as a user. Um, you could do any number of things at the top there to highlight quickly for a given player, and that would change obviously as you look at it. But there you have a very simple, uh, quick way to create a dashboard for wellness data that you might have um, to see a Z score. To view if the player is above or below their average uh, score for a given day for all metrics. Use a rolling average over time with the standard deviation above and below, a team summary and sleep duration over a, over a four day period of time. I hope you guys found this useful in this little series of uh, tutorials. Um, if you did enjoy it make sure you hit like below and also subscribe to make sure you're not missing out on any future videos. And I hope to see you guys next time where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.